hi everybody. I'm just going to do a shrimp pattern, <clears throat> which is the shrimp pattern we use for the blue bastards up at Weeper. Um, and obviously catches lots of other species. Uh, we've caught um, tusk fish, um, yeah, even, even queen fish, triple tails, all sorts of fish on these. Um, it's a pretty simple um, fly to tie. Uh, this is on a Gamakatsu SL12S10, uh, just lead dumbbell eyes, uh, tan thread, in this case I'm using 6O um, thread. I'm going to use a bit of dubbing, I'm going to use two types of dubbing. The first one is EP shrimp dub in tan. The second one is good old fuzzle dub from uh, Muzz Wilson. And as well as that, I've got silicon legs, so this is barred orange, and a little bit of pearl crystal flash um, for, the, for the feelers, and some mono crab eyes. Okay, um, so all I've done so far, as you can see, is just put the dumbbell eyes on. So, what I'm going to do is take the thread just around the bend of the hook a tad. All right, and then we get some of the EP dub. Now what I'm trying to do here with the EP dub is just make um, you know, some mouth parts for the shrimp. So you don't need a lot. Um, so all I'm doing is getting a, a clump like that and I'm gonna tie it in the middle and tie the first piece down the bend in the hook and then take the second piece over and tie that in and that just forms like the mouth parts for the shrimp okay um, the EP5 is good because it goes relatively translucent in the water um, and that's what you want to you want to get so the next step which is pretty straightforward as well is just to put your feelers on so for that as I said I'm just going to use the um, crystal flash and the thing with the blue bastards that I've found when fishing weeper is they don't like a lot of flash sometimes. So um, this is all the flash I'm actually going to put in this fly is this flash here for the feelers. But, uh, you know, the, as I said, there's other species obviously that you target. So it's worth tying some up that have got um, a little bit of extra flash if you, if you want to do that. Um, <clears throat> so that's it. They're tied in. Um, just one at either side of the hook. All right. <clears throat> the next step is I'm just going to take a little bit more of the of the dubbing, but this time I'm actually going to dub it onto the thread. All right. Form a little rope like that, and then I'm just going to dub that forward to the mouth parts. It's a bit loose that bit, so we'll just put that back on. All right, just like that. And then I get my little dubbing brush. And all my dubbing brush this is a piece of Velcro on a paddle pop stick. Um, that's all I use for these ones. Um, and just rough it up a little bit. Like that, and then push that forward so you can see it blends into the piece at the front, all right? Okay, so the next step is to tie in the um, silicon legs. All right, so we're just going to take two silicon legs. So one pair off the piece. First thing I'm going to do is actually knot the ends. All right, so I'm taking it and I'm just going to quickly do a blood knot there and then same for the other end and don't worry about how even they are because I'm going to trim them anyway once I've tied them in but okay so we've got that and then what I do is match up where the two knots are so you get that loop and then what I'm going to do is cut the loop in half like that and that's how I'm going to tie them in much easier to do it this way than it is to try and tie the whole 
leg in one hit and get them to, to face the way you want it. So what I want to do is I'm going to lay them down so that the legs face inwards on the on the fly. Now a little trick when you're doing rubber legs, don't pull the thread super tight. Um, it'll make the silicon flare out, so you'll end up with your legs splaying way out out to the side. So if you look at that, you can see that you know that's going to sit at rest with the piece past the knot facing inwards. All right. And then the same for the other side, so I'm just going to tie that in. What I do first though is make sure basically that the knots line up on the fly. So if I just swing that around a little bit. So I just try to make sure that when I've got both sets of legs and I pull them, that the knots are going to end up in roughly the same place. All right, just to make it look um, symmetrical. And then the same thing, don't, don't pull the thread too tight just enough to hold it in place and that will help also stop the legs twisting All right. so that's the legs on just give them a few more wraps just to hold them in place and you want them sort of coming out in a straight line from the hook so just following the line of the hook forward okay then the next step is the eyes now you can use those easy shrimp eyes that I know a number of people have been using um, you can get them from BWC flies if you want to um, give those a try it's just two eyes on a single stalk I still prefer to use these mono eyes because I can um, play with them and adjust them a little bit better and given I make these eyes it's also a little bit more satisfying I guess to use stuff that you've made yourself sometimes so that's the first one in, then the second one on the other side, and then we try to make sure they line up. So to do that, what I'm going to do is just push them together and make sure they line up when they're in the middle, like so, and then wrap them off, cut off the excess. All right, now at this point, I put a little bit of clear goo hydro on or you could use head cement or whatever other epoxy you've got and that is to make sure it holds the legs and the eyes in stops them coming out and let me tell you some of those tusk fish are pretty hard on flies you know you, sometimes you'll be lucky to get one fish from a fly their teeth are so one heavy duty all right so that's that bit now we're just going to basically dub all the way to the back of the hook um, so the first thing I'll do is just put one layer of EP fiber dubbing um, and the only reason for that is it's just a little bit stiffer than the um, fuzzle dub and helps keep everything forward rather than um, allowing it to move back that way up the hook all right so that's the first one and then I'm just going to use the the fuzzle dub. So a little tip when you're using fuzzle dub sometimes it's um, hard to dub with your fingers because it's sort of slippery, it's got oils in it and um, I just lick my fingers before I do it and you'll get a fairly tight rope like I've got there. So we're trying to get a little bit of a, a little bit of shape to it as well sort of tapering it back towards the back of the hook like that shrimp pattern, shrimp shape we're just going to continue doing that all the way to the back of the hook. Now the other good th cool thing too with, with fuzzle is once you've teased it out it cr creates like a halo. Like almost, it's almost see through but then you see the body underneath. And with those orange legs, um, when you hit it with the UV light especially, you can see the orange legs glow through the fuzzle dub and it just creates like a, um, you know a 3d sort of look to the to the fly so that's something worth um, keeping in mind too okay so once we get to the back what I do then is just do a couple of wraps around the um, dumbbell eyes with the, the dubbing um, just so I've got a bit of dubbing right at the back that I can tease up and then once I've done that that's it we just 
finish off. Pull all the dubbing forward. Create a bit of a neat head. Okay, whip finish. And another set. Think about where you're throwing these flies to because let's face it, there's some pretty um pretty scary territory that you're gonna be throwing these things into. Um, so that's why I um, do so many whip finishes and then I also finish it off with a bit of the um, hydro as well. Alright, so then we take our Velcro dubbing brush and we're going to tease it out all the way around. Make sure you get that EP fibre as well as the fuzzle dub. Alright, looks pretty messy but once you brush it forward there it is. You can see that shrimp if I hold something um, light against that because I've got a dark shirt. But if I hold that up, you can see that real shrimpy look to the fly. Okay, and that's it. That's all there is to it. So, as I said, it's pretty simple, um, but it's a very effective fly. Um, you know, we've caught lots of fish on these, and yeah, you know, there's no reason you can't use it on. Um, species like brim and, and flathead in, in different sizes and um, you know, when, the, when the shrimp are running in some of the estuaries I think you probably do alright with that one. Anyway there it is, thanks guys, see ya.